welcome back for another video. As the deadline nears, in this video we're going to be looking at the experts data for Gaming 4. Every week we reveal the experts team before the deadline, plus we look at their transfer plans, captaincy and chip usage. This wisdom of the crowd approach to FPL will guide you to better decisions and a better rank, plus win your mini leagues. So if you'd like to take advantage of the valuable experts data, make sure you're subscribing. So the top expert heading to Gaming 4 is Dan Wright, he's moved into first place, currently ranked 16k overall after scoring 62 in Gaming 3. His total points for the season now at 209. He's on a really impressive streak, finishing top 10k his last 3 seasons in a row, two of those in the top 2.5k. Did you beat the experts average of 55 last week? Last week threw up a few surprises, another Martinelli blank, Pedro and Gabriel benched again, short injured etc. As such, just 10% are rolling the transfer this week, 44% spending one transfer, 36% spending two transfers and a couple of managers are spending three for a minus four hit. A huge 8% have got their wildcard active this week and we've got a wildcard from one of the top all time managers to run through later this video. So with 90% spending at least one transfer, who are the players they're bringing in and out? It's close but it's Madison who sits on top of 46% picking him up. Let's compare all the mid price midfielders for a sec. Bruno and Mbumo sit first and second for expected goal involvement, but both have taken penalties, which is included in the total, 0.79 xG per penalty. So Madison's the data back pick and he's in third of 2.89 xGI, he's been central to everything Spurs are doing at the moment. In terms of non-penalty xGI, only Bruno's fared better. 9 chances created, 2 big chances created and he's had 2 big chances himself. Fundamentally, a player who's putting up good numbers is likely to excel and he's ticking that box and he faces two promoted sides in Burnley and Sheffield United next. Sterling's very close behind though as the second most popular transfer room, 42% have picked him up. He sits further down the list here with about 50% of Madison's XGI. That said, Sterling has faced Liverpool home and West Ham away, two tough games and his fixtures are turning and if you've watched him, he's certainly passed the eye test the last two games playing way more direct now, always looking to take his man on. Let's pull up the fixtures of those same players and compare them. Arsenal's fixtures are a mixed bag and as such Martinelli is the most sold player this week by 27%, Odegaard the third most sold with 14%. Aston Villa's fixtures aren't quite there yet either, the RB looks really appealing from game week 7 or 8. And Bumo however, still within buy territory, home to Bournemouth this weekend, Everton in game week 6, Forest in game week 7. Brighton on the other hand turning fixtures now and European football which could throw up some surprises as far as minutes. 14% are selling Matoma, 12% selling Pedro. Chelsea top here as far as upcoming fixtures and fixtures can create form which is the hope for Sterling. It was a huge haul against Luton but some have argued Luton at home is the sort of fixture where you'd expect that anyway. However the fixtures are good enough for him to continue delivering. Palace still have some good games themselves so I'd be tempted to give Eze the Wolves game if you own him. Foden a great option with the upcoming block of fixtures, perhaps the high ceiling of everyone here but probably the lowest floor in terms of potential benchings here and there. Man City have drawn Newcastle away in the League Cup which comes between gaming 6 and 7, Forest and Wolves, not ideal and it could potentially cause a bit of rotation in one game either side. West Ham have got the worst fixtures of the lot here but it is Luton this week so if you were planning to wildcard over the international break Bowen makes perfect sense as a one week punt. So 5% have picked Cash up, not a week to be starting him but he's absolutely flying at the moment, a brace last week, he's playing like a winger at the moment and he scored again midweek against Hibernian in the Europa qualifier. If your wildcard's active, the Leno and Areola rotation for very cheap is worth a mention as well. You play Luton twice in a row, Gemic 4 and 5, and then you play Sheffield United twice in a row, Gemic 7 and 8. These two rotate really well long term beyond that as well. Let's have a look at the chip usage among the experts then. So just under 90% have got their first wildcard remaining now. We'll talk more about wildcard windows in future videos. One manager with his wildcard active is Flair Player, who's got an outstanding record with 5 top 10Ks, 3 of which are in the top 1.5K. He shared his wildcard with us, which is as follows. He's got the Areola and Leno rotation, Chilwell, Udogi, Henry in defence, Madison and Bumo, Sterling, Foden in the midfield, Jackson, Alvarez and Harlan front three. So on the bench it's Leno, Fernandez, Trippier and Cash. Here's what he had to say. I've decided to wildcard after a pretty poor start. I'm being aggressive and attacking the fixtures. Chelsea, Man City, Spurs and Brentford are top of any fixture ticker so I've focused on them. I've also got a sprinkling of Villa and Newcastle as their fixtures turn soon as well. 
Leno and Areola rotate well for the considerable future. Even if they don't pick up too many clean sheets, they should rack up the save points and the odd bonus points. No big surprises in the defence, with all of them being fullbacks. I don't have any Man City, which could be costly, but with rotation and a pretty low ceiling, I'm going to avoid them for now. Cash is very interesting if he continues to play as advanced as he was against Burnley. Madison, Sterling and Abumo are the flavours of the month, and for good reason. I think an advantage of the wildcard is I can bring in all of them, while most players are trying to figure out which one to bring in. Foden is the risky one, but I just think he has such potential to haul. Fernandez vs Saka is such a tough call. I slightly prefer the fixtures for Man United, so I've plumped for the Portuguese man. It feels odd to bench an asset like Fernandez, but the pricing allows us to bench some top players when they have tough fixtures. We can't be focused on the exact formation this season, we can be flexible and change it week to week. Jackson has some really impressive underlying stats, he's hard to ignore with their fixtures, and Alvarez is similar to Foden. Although I think I would go for Alvarez over Foden if I could only pick one. Alvarez seems more secure as he seems to have the spot of De Bruyne. Jackson or Alvarez would probably end up becoming Watkins when Villa's good run starts. Haaland's pretty much a perma-captain, which helps towards building a balanced team. You don't need to worry about captaincy. Best of luck with the wildcard and thanks for sending in to us. On to the experts' captaincy, and once again we'll keep it short and sweet because it's pretty much as expected, with the exception of one manager again anyway. 99% of Captain Haaland, just one manager is Captain Bowen against Luton. FPL Fish is the one who's opted for Bowen. In his manager notes, he said, I think there's a chance that Luton rival Derby's performance for the worst Premier League team ever. I'm going to target them whenever possible, so I'm bringing in Bowen and giving him the armband. It's a risk going against Haaland for sure. Hopefully I managed to hold my nerve. And before I forget, shout out to the one manager who didn't go Captain Haaland last week. Not much in it in the end, but a few points gained on that Chilwell captaincy. Good luck Fish with the Bowen captaincy. So on to the experts team for Game Week 4. If you've enjoyed this video so far, hit subscribe so you don't miss these videos every Game Week this season. So the team is as follows. Pickford in goal, Estepinia and Bulldog and Chilwell in defence, Saka, Rashford, Fernandes, Madison and Bumo in midfield, Harlan captain and Jackson up top with him. So which defender to start this week between Bulldog and Saliba is up for debate. They're dead even on the clean sheet odds this week. Everton is surely due a goal. But Arsenal vs Man United historically has thrown up plenty of goals. Realistically both could concede, but you could even make the case for Kabore. 2 mil in the bank with this team, we'll have to see how they spend that after the break. So Madison marginally makes the team ahead of Sterling this week. By game week 5 we might see Rashford drop out in favour of Sterling. Sterling's ownership only going to rise if he delivers in game week 4. Each game week we ask the experts to offer their insight and tips for the game week ahead. Andy says, if you can roll a transfer to next week it could be very important. Transfer window will be shut, international break is then over and you can attack game week 5. It's hard to do but sometimes doing nothing is the best plan. Morton Gamps Edison says, my strategy when allowed this season is with 9 players to go pretty safe, solid and template picks and with the other 2 positions to go a bit differential and rogue to have more fun. Very Messy says, chasing Sterling's a panicky move. Great fixtures, but his underlying stats don't warrant a move away from solid midfielders with high upside, like Rashford, Fernandez, Foden, Saka, and Bumo. I think that's becoming the theme of the early season. Lots of reliable players with high upside are easy to get, but over the long run, it's hopefully going to be better to have Saka than, say, Bowen, Sterling, and Madison. Madison as a possible exception, but it's hard to see Spurs becoming a reliable attacking team. FPL Prem Tipster says I'm going with Sterling because I think he will outscore Madison over the next 5 game weeks due to their easier fixtures, then I'll consider jumping off him. FPL Broccoli prefers Madison. He says Chelsea won't play Luton at home twice, Madison over Sterling. Nathan Brown, another expert who's wildcarded, he says We've gone nuclear this week, decided to play my wildcard a week early as it would look very similar in game week 5 anyway. Pained me to remove Salah, so I hope all the Mo Troofers enjoy the points. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, hit subscribe so you don't miss this series throughout the season. Good luck this game, you can enjoy the break. We'll be live for the deadline later as well. See you then.